Hi everybody! So in this chapter we're going to start looking at one of the applications of integration which is our ability to find areas and not just between a curve and the x-axis but between two curves. So let's review what we already know. We already know that we can use an integral to calculate the area trapped between a curve and the x-axis. Now in this picture, the curve would be f of x and the x-axis would be down here. To find the area of s, we would set up an integral from a to b. Those would be our bounds because those are the x values that this area is trapped between. Inside of that integral, we would put f of x And at the end of the integral, we would put dx, which is just a notation that means that we're integrating with respect to x and that these values are x values. Now this is a review. We've done this before. But the question then that we're going to try to answer today is, how do we find the area trapped between a curve and another curve instead of the x-axis. So for example, in this picture, we want the area that's trapped between the f of x graph and the g of x graph. Well, after our investigation in class today, what we realized was we could do this by creating a subtraction problem. First, we would set up an integral from a to b and put f of x on the inside because that is the top function. But then we would subtract the area that's underneath g. So we would subtract the integral. Again, this would be from a to b. And inside there, we would put g of x. dx because that is the bottom function. If you think about this visually, what we're basically doing is we're taking the area underneath f, this whole thing, and we are taking away the area underneath g, this part which just leaves us the area that's in between. Now sometimes, rather than writing this as two different integrals where we are subtracting, using our integral properties, we can recombine these and make it one integral. So this is equivalent to saying the integral from a to b, because these have the same bounds, we can combine them. And inside of there, we're going to put f of x minus g of x dx. Now, sometimes when we're doing this, we say that we are doing the top function minus the bottom function to remind ourselves that the order we go in here matters because it's a subtraction problem. So we need the top minus the bottom to get the area in between. Now one of the other things we looked at today was that it is possible to integrate with respect to y. So when we look at a picture like this picture, where the functions are defined in terms of y, that means the variable would be a y. And when there is no clear top and bottom, but instead there's a right and a left function, we can set up an integral with respect to y. Now in this picture, the way we would set this up is we would integrate from the, the y value. So let's call this c and let's call this d. Instead of a's and b's, we'll call them c's and d's because they are y values now. We would integrate from c to d of our right function, so f of y dy, because now our variables are going to be y's, minus the integral from c to
to d of our left function, so g of y dy. So again, we're doing the right function minus the left function. Unlike when we were doing integrating with respect to x, where we did top minus bottom, we're doing right minus left. Now, just like we did here, we could combine these and make one big integral from c to d of f of y minus g of y dy. Now my next big question then is how do I decide when I'm integrating with respect to x versus when I'm integrating with respect to y? So we are going to integrate with respect to x when there is a clear top and bottom function. And we're going to integrate with respect to y when there is a clear right and left function. So one of the other ways you can kind of tell as a hint that you should integrate with respect to y is that the equations will sometimes be written in terms of y already. Not always. Sometimes you will have to rearrange and get the x by itself instead of the y to get it in terms of y. But one hint is that in some of these problems, the equations will already be written in terms of y, which is kind of your clue that you should probably integrate with respect to y. So let's look at some examples. First example we're going to do says, let r and s be the regions in the first quadrant shown in the figure at the not above, it's at the right. The region R is bounded by the x-axis and the graphs of y equals 2 minus x cubed and y equals tangent. The region S is bounded by the y-axis and the graphs of 2 minus x cubed and y equals tangent. For part A, find the area of region S. So for part A, I'm looking for the area of this region right here. Now when I look at that region, if I look and try to decide whether I should integrate with respect to x or with respect to y, if I look at the way the region is outlined, I can clearly see that this is the top all the time and that this is the bottom all the time. If I try to look for rights and lefts, if I look at the right side, the, the left side is the y-axis, but the right side has two different parts. Sometimes the right side is the purple part, and sometimes the right side is the red part. So like if I was going from here to the y-axis, the purple graph would be the, the right side. If I was going from here to the y-axis, the red graph would be the right side. So integrating with respect to y is not a good idea here because there's two different right sides. We need to integrate with respect to x. So I'm going to set up two different integrals with a subtraction sign. I'm going to integrate, and I'm going to do the top, which is my 2 minus x cubed function first, dx. And then I'm going to subtract, and I'm going to integrate, and I'm going to do the bottom, which is my tangent of x function, dx second. But the question is, what are my bounds? Now, one thing that's really important is that for most of these problems, you're going to have a calculator. So in this problem, for example, we can use a calculator to help us figure out the bounds of our region. We basically know we're going to start at 0. That's the left bound, is this 0. But the right bound is where I start to have a question. What is this intersection point? So on my calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to graph tangent of x and 2 minus x cubed. I'm going to make sure that I'm in radians mode, and then I'm going to look at my graph. Now my graph is going to look a little crazy because I haven't reset my window yet. Now I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to Zoom 6. 
that looks a little bit better. Now there's my tangent graph. Here's my cubed graph. I want to know that intersection point right there. So I'm going to do second calculate intersection, get close to it, and just hit enter three times. And it'll tell me where they intersect. So it looks like they intersect at the point 0 0.9022 comma 1.266. Okay. Now once I write that down, it's clear that my top bound is 0 0.9022. After I have this set up, I'm just going to type it into my calculator. So I'm going to go math option 9, integrate from 0 to 0 0.9022. Inside here, I'm going to type in 2 minus x cubed minus tangent of x. I'm recombining those into one integral in my calculator. And when I hit enter, I get that my area is 1.161. Remember, you always went around to three decimal places. Now, part B says find the area of region R. Now, if I look at region R and I say, should I integrate with respect to x or with respect to y? In this region, if I look for the top and the bottom function, there are two different top and bottom functions. For the first part of this region, the top function is the red function and the bottom is the x-axis. But for the second part, the top function is the green function and the bottom is the x-axis. So integrating with respect to x here does not make sense. It makes much more sense to do the right minus the left because in this problem the green is always the right and the red is always the left. So when I set this up I'm going to integrate. I'm going to do my right function minus my left function. But here's the problem. If I know that I want to integrate with respect to y then I need to rearrange these equations and get the x's by themselves. So my green function, I'm going to take y equals 2 minus x cubed, and I'm just going to rearrange that so x is by itself. So I'm going to have y minus 2 equals negative x cubed, which means I'm going to have x cubed equals negative y plus 2, and then I'm going to cube root it. And that's what I'm going to put inside here. Because remember, I'm integrating with respect to y. So I want my variables to be y's, my bounds to be y's, etc. Now to figure out what goes in the other function, I'm going to take y equals tangent of x and I'm going to rearrange it. And the way I would get x by itself is just using inverse tangent of y. So that's what I would put inside here. dy and now I need my bounds. Now for my bounds I need my lowest y value and my highest y value. Now my lowest y value is 0. So both of these are going to have zeros. My highest y value would be 1.266, which I found when I found my intersection point. Now on my calculator, I'm just going to type that in. So math 9, 0 to 1.266 of the cube root of negative, and even though it's y's in my problem, when I'm typing in, I'm just going to type in x's. It doesn't matter because this is just an arbitrary variable. And then tangent inverse, and then dx. What did I do? Oh, I put a minus instead of a negative. There we go. 0 0.729 would be my answer. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. This one we're going to do without a calculator. So find the area of the region enclosed by the parabola and the line, no calculator. Well, the area enclosed means completely trapped between those two functions. So I'm talking about this area right here. 
By looking at the picture, there is a clear top function, which is the parabola. and a clear bottom function, which is the line. So I'm going to be integrating with respect to x. So I'm going to have an integral minus another integral. Now my functions, my parabola is my top function, so that's going to go inside of the first integral, dx. And my line is my second function, so that's going to go inside of the second integral, dx. And then I need some bounds. Now in order to figure out the bounds, I need to know where these two graphs intersect. So over on the side, what I'm going to do is make those two equations equal to each other, because that's how I would figure out where they intersect. Because there's a squared here, I'm going to move everything to one side and I'm going to factor and so I'm going to get that my two intersection points are when x is negative 1 and when x is positive 2. So I'm going to put my lower bound as negative 1 and my upper bound is 2. Now from here it's going to make my life a little bit easier when I'm solving if I rearrange this a bit. So I'm going to have the integral from negative 1 to 2 of 2 minus x squared, then minus negative x. I'm just recondensing these into one big integral, so that becomes a positive x. Now I'm going to do the antiderivative, so I'm going to have 2x minus 1 third x cubed plus 1 half x squared plus c, integrating between negative 1 and 2. When I plug in the number 2, I get 4 minus 8 thirds plus 2 plus c minus, when I plug in negative 1, I get negative 2 plus 1 third plus 1 half plus c. The c's are going to cancel. 4 plus 2 is 6 minus 8 thirds negative 2 plus 1 third plus a half. So I'm going to have plus 2 when I distribute that negative minus one-third, minus a half. Now because I'm doing with this without a calculator, I'm going to add things in a logical way to make my life easier. So six plus two is eight, negative eight-thirds and negative one-thirds is negative nine-thirds, and negative nine-thirds is just minus three, Oop, and then minus a half. So I'm going to have five minus a half, which is 4.5, or nine over two. Now let's look at a problem where we don't already have a picture. So it says find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals 2 cosine x and y equals x squared minus 1 using a calculator. So the first thing that I would do is I would graph these things on my calculator. So I would go to y equals and I would type in 2 cosine x and x squared minus 1 and I would go to zoom 6 and I would take a look at what's going on here. So it looks like the region that I'm trying to find the area of looks like this. Now I'm just going to draw a rough sketch. Like that. Based on this picture, there's a clear top and bottom function here. The top function is going to be my cosine function, and the bottom function is going to be my parabola. I know already I'm going to need to know where those intersect in order to find this area. So I'm going to go to second, calculate, intersect, get close to this one, and my intersection point would be 1.265, 0 0.601 and my intersection point on the other side when I calculate that intersection point would be negative 1.265 comma 
0 0.601. So now when I set up my integral, I'm going to have two integrals being subtracted. I'm going to be doing this in terms of x because there is a clear top and a clear bottom. My top function is 2 cosine of x and my bottom function is x squared minus 1. My bounds, because I'm using the x values, would be negative 1.265 to positive 1.265. Because I have a calculator, after this, I'm just going to go ahead and type it in. So, I'm going to go to Math 9, negative 1.265 to positive 1.265, 2 cosine x minus parentheses x squared minus 1, dx, and I get 4.995. All right, well that's the basic gist of what's going on today. We're just going to be finding these areas using integrals and by usually setting up two different integrals and subtracting. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great afternoon and I will see you tomorrow for some practice.